Welcome to the Revenue Throughput Podcast. Our guest today is Mario Martinez of Vengresso.com. And Mario is going to talk about something that we all have some challenges with, thinking about prospecting, how it is to engage with new prospects, what do we have to do to do it as a business owner, as a small business owner, as a head of sales. So let's get started with Mario right now. Well, welcome, Mario, to the Revenue Throughput Podcast. Jose, I'm excited to be here with you. Thank you, my man, for having me. Oh, no, our, our pleasure, because we're going to dig into some pretty deep waters that I know for a lot of people listening to this show, uh, challenges around the area of, uh, of prospecting, of actually just finding new opportunities. So just for context, for our audience sake, who do you typically work with and how does that look typically? Uh, it's a great question. So uh, for us, Vingresso, we work with um, small business owners, uh, entrepreneurs, individual sellers, all the way up to large Fortune 100 sales organizations, really helping their sales teams and sales leaders create more conversations and grow their sales pipeline by teaching them how to prospect better, uh, which results in selling more. And our focus is all around the digital selling and digital sales prospecting. So you've got you know your traditional cold calling, you've got your emailing, everybody's you know got a formula for that. We've really focused in on video as well as social and other digital formats for people to be able to create engagement, which is what we call the omni-channel approach to prospecting. Well, well, you know, prospecting is kind of like one of those, uh, it's like the four-letter word in a lot of circles. A lot mm -hmm. of people are a little bit concerned about how to do it. Often in industrial categories, somebody may have one or two, three salespeople, and they really want the phone to ring inbound. And, and they say, we're so busy doing RFPs and other things. And yet my observation, and perhaps yours has been, is that companies that grow have a commitment to prospecting somewhere in their DNA. So when you talk to an owner, a leader in a business that says, I don't think I have a prospecting problem, what are some of the questions you ask them to help highlight maybe they do? Hmm. Well, I guarantee that most people do have a prospecting problem. Uh, and the, the actually data doesn't lie either. And so if you actually go back to an article, uh, if you type in, you know, what is prospecting, you'll find Vingresso. And there's a great article that we published. <clears throat> and inside there was a study that we did in June of 2020. And then again, in April of 2021. And in June of 2020, we asked business owners, entrepreneurs, sales reps, what was the hardest part of the sales cycle? Was it getting the first conversation, qualifying the opportunity, presenting solution? Uh, or closing a deal. And in, in that particular environment, uh, at that time, June, 59% said getting the first conversation was the hardest stage of the sales cycle. Uh, then we fast forward that to the uh, April 2021, and it went up from 59% to 68%. And this was with a audience of uh, roughly about 800 and some odd reci um, recipients responding to this. So a massive mm -hmm. increase and I, it really is a, a, one of the most difficult things, especially now in the digital buying era, where you've got individuals who are being pinged and dinged in every which direction. So um, this be, makes it harder for a seller, a business owner, uh, someone responsible for revenue to be able to get that first conversation. So unless you've got the magic box, as you talked about earlier, where it's just cha-ching, 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 leads are coming in, or you're spending an inordinate amount of, of, of money you know, 10, 15, 20, $50,000 in ads and you're, you know, making it up on the back end. Um, most folks need help with this prospecting area. So when you look at then you say, well, do I have a prospecting problem? The question you have to ask is, is uh, do you have enough meetings every single day or every single week that will sustain your current business and grow to where you want it to go? Then you look at the next part is, is do you have a big enough sales pipeline? Well, what is big enough? Big enough really comes down to, if you look at, well, what's your close ratio? If your close ratio is a, a one out of three, uh, a, a third of every deals, right? well, every set of deals that come in, well, guess what? You need a 3X pipeline, right? So is your pipeline there? And most of us that are in the small business owners, especially, we um, live the consultant's curse. We sell something, we deliver, and then it goes right. down. We sell something again, and we deliver. And every month or every other month, we're like on a roller coaster, up, down, up, down, up, down. And what we want to get to is the ability to be able to have that steady flow. 
where we can drive leads directly in. And uh, uh, myself as the CEO of the world's largest digital sales training company, I've been at this for six years and almost every day I get an inbound lead coming in for somebody who wants help and assistance in this particular area. And that's because I've become so pervasive and so prevalent inside of the world of social media, the brand, the information, the content, all those types of things, which can be done, but it takes time to get there. And it certainly won't happen for the common business owner who's, um, you know, not whose focus is not uh, teaching people through social media. Right. So you have somebody listening to this and say, yeah, OK, great. So you've been at it six years. You really know what you're doing. Uh, it sounds like you really dialed into the whole digital you know, landscape. So you know how to leverage all those tools. And often that owner has had prior investment history. And what I mean by that is they had a firm that did their content marketing based funnels and they spent a ton of money and then nothing really came out of it. They had somebody else that teed up their LinkedIn activity and and that kind of came, was interesting, but not a lot. They did PR. They did, they, they're not, not spending the money, but somehow it hasn't come together. So is there is there a principle of prospecting that maybe somebody listening to this to say could say, okay, let me start there. Like what's what's the line in the sand that I have to really start with before I start spending all this money doing a, a variety of things? Because I've tried it all. Yeah, well, that's a really great question. So you mentioned a few things. Number one, I hire somebody to do some content marketing. First off, um, unless you've got a dedicated focus, like the way we built ours up, you're not going to go to battle on topics that you're trying to be found for as the small, small individual guy, right? Google's just not going to give you the love, especially if you don't have the right domain authority. Um, is it important? Yes. And I'll tell you about that in a second. The second thing you said is, as I hire somebody to do my LinkedIn activities, look, you're taking the lazy way out. Okay. There is no easy path to growing revenue, except DIY, do it yourself. And that's really tough for a business owner to hear, uh, um, a, a, a CEO of a small business, because you wear so many hats. Well, until you get to the point where you can hire a salesperson or two and a sales manager, guess what? Your primary focus, your primary focus must be, and you never take your eye off this ball, is selling. You cannot do that. Why? Because whatever the product is, you know. Whatever the product is, that it, how it helps, you know. The business problem it solves, you know. And that content, that information inside of your head is exactly what you should be taking out to the marketplace on platforms like LinkedIn, as an example. You don't need to write a 2,000 word blog, then figure out how to put it on WordPress, then figure out how to do SEO optimization. No. What you can do is begin to develop a connection strategy with target buyers who you want to go after. And then once you've got that connection strategy and you begin connecting with people, you now begin publishing your thought leadership. And every day you'd be committed to 30 minutes. What are some of the problems that I solve for customers? Take the time to write whatever it is, 300 words, 200 characters, whatever the number is, you just write about it and start talking about it on LinkedIn. Then start figuring out strategies as an example, to be able to get that amplified. But the bigger your network is with your target buyers and all the individual in people that would be influenced by that, the better your results will be. And that's what's the importance of developing a connection strategy. We forget as business owners that we no longer, Jose, have that big Rolodex sitting right. on our desk. You remember the, Rolodex. Okay. Yeah, the, right, the turning ball, right? We got the A through Z index. Right, I mentioned that to my kids and they, they literally draw black, like what's a Rolodex? What? <laughs> yeah, what is it? We don't have, and I don't think anybody has that on their desk. And if you do have it on your desk, I guarantee that it's a paperweight right now. Right. With that in mind, where is our Rolodex? Guess what? If you're really smart, it's not in your contacts on your phone. And it certainly better be synchronized to at least Gmail so that you've right. got a backup copy to it. Where it's at, your digital Rolodex is on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. That is now the Rolodex. It's a digital Rolodex. And that is how we need to be as a connected organization. And frankly, um, most organizations, most business owners will not survive if they do not figure out how to leverage uh, social as a way to be able to engage and video and those types of things. I think well, yeah, but, but there's an owner, and, and I guarantee you there's this person, and maybe it's somewhat generational, but it's not just generational, that will say something like this. Like I talked to some of my peers 
you know, let's say they're part of a peer group or something like that. And they don't spend a lot of time on LinkedIn and they don't know anyone who does. I've actually heard that kind of expression. So what do you say to that person? Well, it might be true. So guess what? You should be using video because guess what? Video is one of the top five global marketing tactics being used right now to lure you in to anything. Think about that. What do you stop at on social media? What do you stop at on the billboards? Why do billboards now have video, digital right. billboards playing on the freeway when you're driving by? <laughs> Why do they have digital messaging? It's because we are that type of society now. And if you think about all the little flashing lights and billboards and things that you see inside of a mall, inside of a store, everything is digital. So guess what? If your buyer's not there on social, I would argue that that's probably not true. But I could think of some occasions, like if you're doing supplying services to coal miners or something like that maybe so right but 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 um in that particular case you still are now a digital um uh, individual and so are your buyers and guess what engage with them through asynchronous video communication U utilizing video tools like hippo video or one mob you can utilize these tools to be able to send an asynchronous video message so that you begin to build that trusted relationship by people seeing your eyeballs and hearing your voice. And, mm. and really, if you think about this, you're leveraging two senses, not one. On email, it's one. I'm sight. On, on, an, on a phone call, it's one, hearing. But on a video, it's both sight and hearing. So you get to leverage both of those two things. So great, if you think that that's the case and you've done the analysis that your buyer is not there, I really, really, really hope that you reach out to us and we'll see and we'll tell you whether or not that's actually true, then don't use social, but you better be using video. Uh, and that is um, what is making everybody tick these days. And just think about um, a lot of products now, some of the hottest products being purchased on Amazon, as an example. Uh, even um, when we think about um, uh, Netflix and Hulu, we don't want to watch a video without a trailer. We don't want to buy a product without a video review. And even now home buying purchases. Do you know how many homes are now listed? with a, a, a video tour, an online video mm -hmm. tour? Right, because we don't want the buyer to, to, to uh, because the buyer doesn't want to show up now at the place and say, oh my God, this is a total disaster. They want to see it first and then go see the location in person. So I, I would argue that um, as a business owner, look, I'm 45 and older, right? I grew up starting at 19 years old doing software sales as a then telemarketer. I've been in the business for uh, 25 years. And one thing for certain has changed. Buying has changed. Okay. The way we buy has changed. What do I mean by that? Both buyer engagement and the power that is inside the hands of a buyer. They can go do any amount of research in most cases and get anything they want about anything that they're looking for. And you will be left at the end of the line trying to sell something and not have brought yourself early on into the process. And that is the one thing I know that has changed. And most leaders sitting at that 45 and older, our age and older, that are either A, listening or B, watch this video. If you have not changed with the times, you will become obsolete in less than one year. Less than one year. You won't have a sellable business you won't have the ability to be able to pass it off to your next generation because you cannot keep doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different set of results. You might have a good lifestyle business, but it's not sellable. And what are you gonna do afterwards? Maybe you retire, okay, cool, all right, great. But don't, don't most of us business owners really form something so that we can actually have an exit at the, at the, at the end? Many times we do, sometimes we don't, but either way, if you don't want to be in that situation, whether you do or you don't want to sell your business or whether you do or you don't want to have an exit model, we need to be focused on how to drive revenue to keep to sustain our lifestyle and eliminate some of the stress that we have. That is a big problem, too, as well as a business owner, which I face every single day. Well, sure. And, and any, you know, myself included. And I think, uh, you know, just the owning of a business is no small thing. And people who don't actually own a business they don't understand fully all the different moving parts there. But but one of the things you hit on, and I, I want to just loop back to it a little bit, Mary, about how buyers have changed, right? So, and, and the way I've described it to to clients, and maybe you would use maybe different language, but maybe we get to the same point, is that 
in the old days, a buyer might be 20% into the funnel, so to speak, of, of thinking about it. And they say, okay, who are the vendors in the category? And they start asking the vendors because they need information. Today, they're 80% down the funnel. They got all the information they need. So the old classic industrial salesperson, who's the information broker, isn't necessary anymore. That person isn't actually bringing any additional value. In fact, the customer, the only reason you're in the room and the customer has evaluated that your offering is at least on the short list. They, they've gotten to the short list and you didn't even know it. So you're saying that the only way we get to be on that short list is if we're delivering some valuable something, something, content, video, comments on LinkedIn, something that gets us into the conversation so that when they're working through that process themselves on their own, because they're not even involving us there, we're somehow in the mix. Did I understand that correctly? Is that the big well, idea or, or am I misstating well, that? Kind of, sort of. Um, I agree with everything you said, except that the only way we're going to be involved uh, in that process is if we're if we're doing any of the things that I'm talking about. That's not necessarily true. Okay. You can end up at, involved in the process, but to your point, you're going to end up at 67% of the way through the buying decision process, right? And, and at 68% to the end, that's the last third, right? Mm -hmm. That last third right there, that's, can you win a deal? Yeah, maybe, but wouldn't we like to be involved to your point, go back 15 years ago where we were now the keeper of information and mm -hmm. we had, we were enabling buyers to be educated and to be, and to be taught what it is that, that they, that we wanted them to know. Right. And that was why one of the reasons why RFPs, RFIs, right. were so huge. Nowadays, I think, I think in the last five years, I've gotten one RFP. Now, I'm not saying that procurement folks don't, don't produce uh, RFPs. They have to figure out some value for themselves inside an organization. Yeah. But, but the reality is, is I've, one time, one time is what I've done that in the last five years. Why? Because so much information is available. And you can, to your point, you can make some of these decisions uh, well in advance and then finally get a short list and call some vendors up and, and offer support. Where I want to be at in the sales process is I want to be at the beginning. And I want people, mm -hmm. which happens nearly every single week, someone calls me up or someone messages me on LinkedIn or email and says, I've been watching what you've been doing. I want to have a, a conversation to get some advice on what you think we should be doing. Right? I've been watching what you're doing, who you've been helping, how you've been helping. I want to call you up to get some advice. So now what I I am looked at as a trusted thought leader mm -hmm. that can help a business owner or a sales leader solve a specific problem. So instead of them going out and searching for all this information, they or going out and asking their peers, I'm now one of their peers. Right. And that's where you start getting that really trusted relationship because of the information that you put out there and because you become a visible CEO. Um, you know, can you can you win without being a visible CEO? Sure, you can if you've got something that nobody else can can deliver. Right. And that's there. There are there are many nuances to this. So I'm I'm really speaking in generalities sure, when, I, when, I, when I speak about this. But the reality is, is that the social CEO is the one that will win. Uh, it could be your blessing at a call, but it could also be your curse. <laughs> so be careful. Uh, uh, there's certain topics that you want to avoid most, most certainly on your, on your social platforms, but nonetheless, um, we want to try to get in ahead of the curve. We also want to build a connected community, our digital Rolodex, because there is a 60% higher probability that you can get into the door with a potential target through a referral than going at it through cold market. Sure. Right? The referral is king. And that will never change. That has been all for all eternity uh, for that, that we have known uh, 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 men and that has been documented. People said, what did you do? Right. Who did you use? And we want to be that person that is being made uh, for, for the referral. Right. It's, a, sure. it's the ultimate risk mitigation, right? You're always, Absolutely. You're making a large purchase. Like, who did you use? If I trust you and I think you have good judgment, Whoever you chose, I feel like you vetted it to some point, so I feel more comfortable with that. So Absolutely. one very last thing here, Mary, just because we're coming up, up to time here. So somebody listening to this and, and watching you and say, okay, Mary, he seems obviously very comfortable in video. This guy probably has tremendous social channels and putting out content, very comfortable doing that. 
But I'm just like, I run, a, I run a contract machine shop, right? I do, you know, I, I turn metal, you know, for large OEMs. I'm kind of in the, in the industrial kind of nitty gritty of it all. I don't think I'm that interesting. So how do I, how do I overcome that to be interesting enough that I could be posting and, and creating some of these connections you're describing? So here's a, here's a, a saying. To be interesting, you need to be interested. That's great. All right. To be interesting, you need to be interested. What does that mean? It means it, it, no matter what you do. And by the way, one of our clients is a 12 person sales force. It is the world's largest vanilla extract producer. <laughs> Okay, we've got the world's largest vanilla extract producer as one of our clients. Who would have ever thought that a vanilla extract manufacturer and distributor, the world's largest, would need digital and video social training, right? Okay, so here we are. We're, 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 we're here in this environment. And the point is, is that they're changing with the times because their buyers, which are scientists, by the way, uh, uh, many of their scientists, because they all the little taste testing and the formulas and all that stuff that they have, that's one particular buyer. And then they have another set of buyers. These people are, guess what? They're on social, they're accepting videos. So what I would say to all of those folks is, is, you know, um, times have changed. And then the second part is, is if you want to be interesting, you've got to be interested in other people. Uh, and there's a, a, a gal who um, I absolutely love and adore. Her name is Sherry Leviton. Um, and she is a, um, a phenomenal speaker, sales leader, and um, business owner as well. And she um, uh, sent me um, uh, uh, a picture. We, 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 were, we were both featured in the movie um, by Salesforce called The Story of Sales. And uh, Salesforce pr produced the first uh, sales documentary, a movie uh, that's now available to the public um, ever in the world. And they selected 20 sales influencers. And I was privileged to be one of those 20 sales wow, influencers to be part of that. And Sherry was as well. And um, one of the things I love about her is that she is such a human to human type of person. One day, two years after the event, she sent me a gift. And it was the gift on the anniversary of the story of sales. And it was an actual, I had to turn around and look at it. It was a, a, a beautiful frame a picture of me posing in front of the monitor story of sales and, a, and the actual um, handout that they handed out at the um, premiere at the movie premiere uh, right there in the frame. My gosh, like that was when she did that, I was like, you know, you are human. The, 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 <laughs> you are the epitome of to be interest, uh, interest, uh, interesting. You've got to be interested. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that that demonstrated really some real thought. Now, we don't do that to everybody, of course, all of our buyers, but you get the idea when sure. we've got to reach out and we've got to become interested in other people and how to solve their problem to become interesting to them. That's fantastic. And Mary, we're going to use that as our as a touchstone landing point on this conversation. It's been fantastic. Some great, great insights for our listeners. And if somebody listening to this uh, podcast today wanted to know more about you and your work, What's the best way for them to find out more? Uh, well, two spots. First off, you can go to vengresso.com. That's V-E-N-G-R-E-S-O, one S. Mm -hmm. um, feel free to go to vengresso.com. Also, if you're on LinkedIn, I would encourage you to connect with me, but please make sure you send a personalized connection request message and say you heard me on the Revenue Thru Throughput podcast with Jose. Uh, so I understand who you are and how you found me. So make sure you know how to send a personalized connection request. And if you don't know how to do that, uh, all you have to do is go to Vingresso's YouTube page and look up uh, personalized connection requests and you'll find some great videos there. Well, that's fantastic, Mario. Thank you so much for that. And thank you again for being part of the Revenue Throughput Podcast. We appreciate it. You bet, buddy. Thanks for having me.